Hello and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today we are continuing um, a minimal setup for potential plein air painting. Um, I talked about this kind of folio in the previous video. This time I'm expanding the palette quite a bit. I'm moving away from the white wash and the black wash as that felt a little overwhelming. Uh, the opacity and it just uh, has to be approached I think a little bit differently for me. So I'm taking a step back and looking at raw umber, raw sienna, and burnt sienna, and the burnt umber. And looking at it from the standpoint of having used raw umber and burnt umber combination a lot as a two color palette, the raw sienna for maybe some yellowish and the burnt sienna will probably put things a little bit more on the red side. So we'll see. I haven't really explored those four together ever, I don't think. So we'll just play around and have some fun. Um, okay. So we have the fluid paper. This is the six by eight. The end goal here will be as if I like this little palette, which I'll wind up Velcroing it down or doing some glue. Let's see how that works. As you know, I mainly use the Hake brush. I paint fast and loose. I like to have one hand free with a paper towel or to hold other tools. Well, both hands, yeah. So. I use raw sienna in uh, normal paintings to kind of map things out. And that's what I'm kind of doing here. I'm mapping out the sky and um, some of the dead grass from this scene. Thinking that my raw umber will be my cooler tone. I'm having a hard time getting it to come off. There we go. Leave that for background. A little bit closer. Left out some whites. I have a feeling that the raw sienna will either be not used or used very, um, just a small quantity. I just don't use raw sienna that much. I, I enjoy it, but I feel like I've just been on a burnt umber kick for so long. I still have some of Hammy's hair everywhere from him jumping on the art table earlier. I have to go through that previous video and just screen grab and cut all those out so you guys can watch just a compilation of Hammy doing his thing and jumping. So this is the Burnt Sienna. It is on the warmer side. So let's open this up here. Now it's kind of an exploration of the material and the tools. I think I had mentioned that I think the Hake brush would be work fine on this paper, on this size, but um, the palette cups are a little bit hard to fit it in. So, so maybe a small Hake brush, if I chose to get, go that route, that might be a future experiment. I used to use the small Hake brush for 5x7. 
but 11 by 14 has just been the size that I've been painting in for quite a while now. I think you find a size that you like. I think historically some artists would paint on kind of canvas on then from there kind of cut it to the size that they liked and find what worked. I don't remember who that was. All right, I need to start naming the colors as we play around. So this is the raw umber. That earthy brown, the cooler brown. I have a photo on the side that I'm kind of using a little bit as a reference. But just more playing around and exploring depth and texture. Can use our scraping tool. Not really scraping the paper more, just kind of tapping it and exploring this, this vertical repetition. blade is a little bit more damaging to the paper. I don't want too much of that in the background. I do have cat hair right there from Hammy's infamous jump. He's a long-haired cat and it's everywhere. Percy doesn't really jump on the art table. She'll kind of jump on the table whenever I'm drinking tea, but I think that it's mainly because she wants me to do the laser pointer. So she knows that if I'm sitting down, uh, relaxing, drinking tea, waking up, um, and she's got the zoomies at that time, she wants um, to play. And I can drink tea with one hand and laser pointer with the other. With uh, throwing some things, I can get per Percy to fetch. So the um, the raw sienna, you could see how that's warmer and comes forward. I do like that effect. There was a light raw sienna in the sky. Put some burnt um, uh, raw umber in the background. I put put the burnt sienna in the foreground at one point and some burnt umber. I'm coming back with stronger quantities. You can get. A very moody, tonalist, foggy feel to things if you want. This is the burnt sienna to warm things up. Just for the sake of creating a sense of depth. I do want to experiment with expanding to um, yellow ochre or other earth tone and um, like just a little bit of ultramarine, but that that's, that will be for another day. No yellow ochre is going to be more. Um, opaque than the Rossiana, but this is burnt umber right here, using it for the warmer shadows, darker areas. Anyway, where was I? Um, 
yellow ochre. That's ultramarine. The yellow ochre will be a little bit more um, opaque. I don't recall how it mixes with ultramarine. It's like the Siennas. If you mix them with ultramarine, it'll more gray them than turn a green. But um, yellow ochre shows up in the Zorn palette mixed with, I'm not sure if it's lamp black or carbon black, to make kind of olive greens. So that's something to explore. No, hand me. Burnt umber. I did use a palette knife to scoop, uh, to scrape, to scoop, scoop and scrape. There you go. The color out of the um, the tubes and put them onto the palette, mainly because I'm not sure how much uh, manipulation of this palette I'm going to use, especially you know with all the experiments that we're running. So I don't want to pour extra paint and then throw a whole bunch away. This is also fresh paint, which can have a difference. Just texturizing this foreground. I am going to switch up brushes here. We can get thin strokes with the, um, the squirrel mop, but I'm going to grab the fan brush, burnt umber, the raw umber, looking for a dark. I'm gonna, I am wet and wet here, so things are going to diffuse. So I can either kind of take advantage of that and get a variety of soft edges and hard edges, lost and found. But that'll Definitely change an approach, and it'll definitely affect, be affected by how things are when you're out and about painting. So if I'm out in a field painting, I'm going to dry a lot quicker. This is the raw umber. using the fan brush to kind of spread out and get some vertical textures here. with small palettes like this I could put it out and let it dry and then pull take it out to location see how my hand winds up having so much stuff in it I do find this paint uh, paper holds handle scraping very well. For me, it does have that buckling aspect to it. I wonder if it should be glued on all four sides. I wonder if there's a way to glue your own. No, Hammy, you are not jumping up here, bud. Back of the fingernail. 
got to keep an eye on them. He's right by my leg. I'm pushing textures in. There we go. This raw umber, darks. I like the palette combination. Uh, the color, I, I'm enjoying it. Uh, some raw sienna and the uh, raw umber. Trying to get many little micro marks at once using the fan brush. a little bit of burnt sienna in there. It's going to pull water out. Burnt umber. Towel. Let's do a um, raw sienna burnt umber combination. Burnt sienna raw um, burnt umber. Texture in. Right. Using the razor blade. Of course, if you use a razor blade, be careful. I'm curious, what tools have you found to be invaluable lately? For me, it's been the razor blade for these experiments. I'm going to switch to the number one rigger. So I think this is the most brushes I've used on this size paper for these series of experiments. But with this one and the previous one, the first time kind of really looking at photographs, um, your end goal once again is plein air painting. 
And I think once working from a source, not working from my imagination, I will want to use a, um, a myriad of brushes. But I need to really restrict that. Let's see. This is raw umber. I want to see how faint I can get with a wet wash. Or just a wet mix with this. It doesn't seem to be causing any issues here. They're still damp, but I guess it's not damp enough to cause cauliflowering. I want more water. This will help us some. Coming back to these, this foliage, you know, ways to build it up without making it seem too fan brushy. It's honestly just the best way I can say it is just, I enjoy the fan brush more than I thought, but I don't want I want you to see the brush strokes, but I don't want it to be the fan brush brush strokes, if that makes sense. Burnt umber. Uh, raw umber, using it to build up. We have quite the red glow with this painting. It's very, very warm. Use this for the broken down fence. Gonna put that here and here. These old fences, I wonder who has the um the keys to them, they're still openable, there's still a path. It's just, um, there's a lot that I can see in the woods along that road that I longboard on, but a lot is just so overgrown. And you see kind of posts and things like that. And I know a lot of the land used to be cattle. In fact, my friend's property, which was covered in trees, used to be uh, farmland and he's been having it kind of brought back to that state. Just curious what it was like, I guess, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, how fast nature can take over. And, um, 
That's one of the things whenever I read about tonalism, burnt sienna. There's an article, the 12 or 13 aspects of uh, tonalism. If you look it up, that'll be what comes up. I unfortunately don't recall the writer's name. I meant to look him up to see if he had painted it all, but there's very in-depth painting where he identifies 12 or 13 properties of tonalist paintings. And one of them you know, talks about kind of a post uh, Civil War um, vibe, a focus on landscapes that are abandoned and show former usage. Maybe old buildings, if there's there, old chimneys or signs of life. Sienna. Using a pretty strong right here, but I'll allow that. Using it as a thick foliage, the thick green aspect. Think with some raw umber. I want it for the, you know, the darker undersides. Now, if we can pull anything out, there we go. There's a blade. If you cut down in a certain fashion, you can get the white lines either by scraping or through actual cuts. When you do cut wet and wet, or wet, it'll be a little different than um, cutting on dry. So if you choose to experiment with the razor blade, try out all the different um, angles. Burnt umber. So it has me thinking a lot about, well, with the Ron Ransom palette, you can do your raw sienna with Payne's gray, and that'll pull a slight green. So that could be a possibility, because I, I, I mentioned yellow ochre and the black earlier. Here I'm using just the raw umber as my dark. And when I reintroduce black and white gouache into the experiments, I need to make sure it's not heavy-handed. I get overwhelmed, I think, by them. 
and just use them as a, you know, just a light touch. I'm very pleased with this one. I just absolutely love earth colors. And it's been so much fun just longboarding past these sites. It's been so cold and windy that Sometimes I can't really take the approach of kind of racing and going for as fast as I can push, you know, or as far as I can push. It's more just um, pushing into the wind, but a lot of being able to just see what's going on around me now. Ooh, I think I like that. That strong yellow ochre. I keep on going back to that. This mix. But it kind of push that broken fence back. So we used the number one rigger, the fan brush, the um, squirrel mop, the card, this well, the, the scraper and the razor blade. I think Let's do a pause. I'm going to dry off. Uh, I do anticipate this lifting. However, I'm going to hold the blow dryer up high to try to prevent that. All right, so it's just a fact of life with this that if I use the blow dryer, it's going to lift this um, bottom glue off. Overall, I'm very happy with this approach in this palette. The main thing is that here I was looking at a photograph and for reference, as opposed to making up a scene and having, you know, just just fun pushing things around. So there was a little bit more um, restriction taking place because of that. And um, whenever I paint from a photo or from a live thing, it does uh, change my approach. So I'm thinking that to experiment with the white wash and the um, black wash. Yellow ochre added into this. And maybe ultramarine blue. But um, how much of the ultramarine blue would get used or how it would be used in it, I'm not sure. So I'll continue with these experiments. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you like, please like, subscribe, follow, and thank you to everybody that supports on the Patreon and through this super thanks. You all have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.